Climate change today poses some of the most serious risks to agricultural production, food security and the state of the world's natural resources. Small producers and the poor in the developing world are particularly vulnerable to it, along with more frequent and intense climate-related disasters. This complicates global efforts for long-term development, food security and poverty reduction. Considering the threat that climate change poses, FAO recently stated that addressing climate change will be among the organization's top priorities over the next four years. Adaptation of food production and livelihood systems to climate change will naturally have to be a large component of global development efforts. At the same time, the agriculture, forestry and land use sectors account for 24% of global greenhouse gas emissions. Therefore, climate change mitigation must also be prioritised by these sectors. In December 2015, the FAO Office of Evaluation concluded the evaluation of FAO's contributions to climate change adaptation and mitigation over the period 2009-2014. This video presents some of the main findings and recommendations of this work. The focus was on results at country level and the evaluation examined a sample of projects in 11 of the most vulnerable countries to climate change across the developing world, according to the Notre Dame Global Adaptation Index. The study also covered the organization's engagement in global level dialogues. The team used a variety of methods for data collection and analysis and interviewed over 500 stakeholders. I think the evaluation gives us a big chance, particularly because our members, the member states that we service, are behind them. A, it gives us a very good understanding what FAO has been doing in the past and out of that we can very clearly identify what we did right and where we can further improve. FAO has a unique comparative advantage with the advanced tools it has it for uh, climate change adaptation and mitigation analysis um, and these tools have helped developing countries to strengthen their monitoring and knowledge systems for uh, climate change adaptation and mitigation. These tools have also helped to understand the, the possible impacts of climate change and where greenhouse gas mitigation can be achieved. These tools were particularly of value when they were tailored to country contexts and um, when they were picked up by uh, development investment partners such as the World Bank in their projects and that allowed for a much further and wider impact uh, for, for FAO. Government ministries and partner institutions in the 11 focus countries have found FAO's climate change related data and tools to be of substantial quality. Another strength of FAO, it lies in its um, position as a neutral and trusted facilitator, but also an agency with the technical expertise. Um, and this strength has allowed it to uh, harmonize different strategies from emergency response to disaster risk reduction to longer term climate change uh, adaptation in agriculture. Um, it has the technical expertise to do this and the uh, historic relationship with member countries uh, that allows it to carry out with, the, with this work. This is really key, so I think the challenge is, is maybe more or equally institutional in the developing countries as much as it is, is technical. One area that uh, FAO can be strong at, it, and it's strong in some countries, is to strengthen the engagement of its country offices in uh, dialogue with the governments on climate change, to bring solutions to them. Um, this is really shown to be um, a, a very important and an area where FAO has been successful in some areas. Another area FAO could work on is in uh, developing its partnerships further with a whole host of, of different types of institutions, NGOs for field level work, 
research institutions for understanding the impacts or, uh, of climate change or its the possible uh, benefits of interventions and with development investment partners. And addressing the climate change impacts of gender is a priority which FAO could give more attention. Climate smart agriculture is also a key issue and FAO has contributed a lot to its, the development of this idea. Um, but I think FAO needs to look at the, the suitability of this concept for uh, sectors other than agriculture um, and to perhaps emphasize adaptation a little more uh, in alignment with the interests of developing countries. For sure, the priority should be on adaptation considering that FAO serves the developing countries and their need is more in adapting to climate change, but adaptation will bring mitigation, bringing core benefits. So following up on the, the, both the strengths and the challenges of FAO, I would say perhaps the, the main recommendation the evaluation makes is for FAO to, to begin with developing a, um, a climate change strategy or even more of a concrete work plan of uh, where exactly it will work, what kinds of interventions would uh, assist most based on its comparative advantages. Um, and. Uh, meeting that or sort of fulfilling that recommendation could also allow it to address a number of other uh, recommendations in the report. For example, um, a, the analysis that would be done for the strategy or work plan could also allow it to identify partners to um, determine which country offices uh, need to be strengthened uh, for engagement on uh, climate change, uh, in climate change dialogue at the member country level. We had two major international instruments agreed. One, the Sustainable Development Goals, and second, the Paris Agreement on Climate Change. And for both, we need to now to actively go out to the international community and explain the central importance of agriculture as a part of the solution. So I think this recommendation is also something that we should take at heart here at FAO. The recommendation suggests a, a number of different kinds of mainstreaming. Uh, mainstreaming capacity development in FAO's work with the member countries, um, mainstreaming climate change adaptation and mitigation uh, to a basic level in, in all of our development and natural resource management work, and finally um, providing improved guidance on the distinctions between emergency response, disaster risk reduction, and um, longer term adaptation work. From the evaluation and its recommendation, FAO prepared an implementation plan. And one of the first elements of the implementation plan is to prepare a climate change strategy. We will define what is FAO's vision on climate change, how FAO could be serving and supporting the member countries in implementing climate change strategy and policies, and more than that, how we can have an integrated approach to climate change. We hope that we'll be having a draft of the strategy to be finally approved by the Council in December 2016. FAO has much to offer for tackling climate change as it relates to the agricultural sectors and food security. And it is hoped that these recommendations will help the organisation to realise more of its potential.